examination of ulcer on inspection first note the size and shape of the ulcer and measure the size in centimeters in two dimensions with a measuring tape then note the number whether it is a single ulcer or are there similar ulcers elsewhere on the body now note the exact anatomical location of the ulcer many ulcers have a characteristic site where they occur for example a varicose ulcer is located on the medial aspect of the lower third of the leg rodent ulcers are confined to an area of the face above the line joining the angle of the mouth to the ear lobule tuberculous ulcers are common in the neck over the sites of tuberculous lymphadenopathy an ulcer on a weight bearing area is usually a trophic or neuropathic ulcer for example over the heels as seen in this patient or over the sacrum and other bony points in a bedridden patient and arterial or ischemic ulcers occur over the dorsum of the foot and the toes next inspect the margin and the edge of the ulcer margin is the skin border or transitional zone of skin around the ulcer that is it is the line demarcating the ulcer from the intact skin there are three types of margin a healing ulcer shows a typical bluish line of growing epithelium which is squamous epithelium without cornification hence looks bluish inside this line is the red granulation tissue covered by a single layer of epithelium which is transparent and shows the red color of the underlying granulations and outside is the white zone of newly cornified epithelium so the margin of a healing ulcer shows three lines outer white then blue and inner red a spreading ulcer shows a red inflamed and irregular margin with inflamed surrounding skin a chronic non-healing ulcer shows marked fibrosis with thickened white skin margins without the blue line of growing epithelium edge is the mode of union between the floor and the margin of the ulcer so it has thickness a third dimension and it can be inspected as well as palpated there are five types of edges sloping edge of a healing ulcer punched edge of a trophic ulcer undermined edge of a tuberculous ulcer raised and everted edge of a malignant ulcer and raised but not everted edge of a rodent ulcer now let us inspect the five types of ulcer edges first is the sloping edge in a healing ulcer the healthy granulations over the floor are slightly below the skin surface and the skin is sloping down to it also the skin thins out gradually if seen under a microscope so healing ulcer has a sloping edge punched edge in a trophic ulcer the tissue destruction is equal in all planes from skin to bone so the ulcer is deep with a vertical edge as if the tissue had been punched out this is the punched edge of a trophic ulcer undermined edge in a tuberculous ulcer the tissue destruction is more in the subcutaneous plane than in the skin so the skin overhangs at the edge as demonstrated by this pin under the skin margin this is termed as the undermined edge everted edge in a malignant ulcer the malignant tissue grows very fast and overhangs the skin margin the ulcer itself is raised above the skin level note the overhanging tissue particularly at the lower border this is the raised and everted edge of a malignant ulcer lastly this is the slightly raised but not everted edge of a rodent ulcer which is a slow growing malignancy note the tissue destruction caused near the nasal la and on the upper side the raised rolled edge with nodules is seen now inspect the floor of the ulcer floor is the exposed surface of the ulcer note the type of granulation tissue the amount of slough and the nature of the discharge 
A healthy ulcer shows healthy granulation tissue, no slough and a small amount of serous discharge. A spreading or infected ulcer shows areas of unhealthy granulation tissue and areas of slough. Slough is necrotic soft tissue which has not yet separated from the living tissue. A chronic non-healing ulcer shows pale flat granulation tissue which does not bleed easily on touch. A larger sized ulcer where epithelialization is not completed in time shows hypertrophic granulation tissue. Note these exuberant granulations rising above the surface of the skin. This is also termed as proud flesh and is accompanied by excessive serosanguinous or purulent discharge. Lastly, inspect the surrounding area. If the ulcer is spreading and infected, the surrounding skin is shiny, red and edematous due to cellulitis. Note the shiny red skin around this ulcer where the ulcer itself is covered with slough. Dark pigmentation and eczema surrounding the ulcer is typical of varicose ulcers that is ulcers associated with varicose veins. Multiple scars and puckering of the skin surrounding an ulcer in the neck are suggestive of tuberculous ulcers. Hypopigmentation of surrounding skin is common in non-healing ulcers. An ulcer within a large scar suggests the possibility of a marjolin's ulcer. Note the extensive scars of burns which the patient had suffered from in childhood 30 years back. To revise, first note the shape and measure the size of the ulcer, then note the number and exact anatomical location of the ulcer, then inspect the margin and the edge of the ulcer, inspect the floor for granulation tissue, slough and discharge, and lastly inspect the surrounding skin. Now let us proceed to palpation. First palpate the surrounding skin for temperature and tenderness. Then wear gloves and palpate the ulcer, its edge, floor and the base. And lastly, test the fixity of the ulcer to the structures in its base. Begin the palpation by noting the temperature of the surrounding skin, palpating with the back of the fingers and comparing with the opposite normal side. Then note the tenderness over the surrounding area. Warmth and tenderness are suggestive of inflammation seen in acutely inflamed and spreading ulcers. Now palpate with a gloved hand over the edge and floor of the ulcer. The edge is barely distinguishable in a healing ulcer. In a non-healing ulcer, it has a firm feel due to fibrosis, while in a malignant ulcer, the edge is hard. Now palpate the granulation tissue over the floor and note whether it bleeds on touch. A healthy granulation tissue shows pinpoint hemorrhagic spots while a malignant ulcer may bleed profusely as seen in this epithelioma over the scalp. If there is slough over the floor, note whether the slough is attached loosely or firmly. Now palpate through the floor to note the consistency of the base and to note the underlying structure whether it is a muscle, a fascia or a bone. Base is the tissue on which the ulcer rests. If the ulcer is small as seen here, pinch it up and palpate the base between the fingers. But if the ulcer is large, the base has to be felt over the floor of the ulcer with gloved fingers. All chronic ulcers will have a firm base due to fibrosis, but a hard feel or a marked induration should raise the suspicion of malignancy. Now try to move the ulcer side to side in two different directions and note whether it is fixed to the underlying structures. Note the reduced mobility in this malignant breast ulcer. If the ulcer is over a muscle mass, in this case, the pectoralis major. Ask the patient to contract the muscle and test the mobility again over the contracted muscle at right angles to the direction of the muscle fibers. 
Note how the ulcer becomes fixed when the pectoralis major is contracted. Reduced mobility implies fixity to the underlying muscle. This is the mobility test. To revise, first palpate the surrounding skin for warmth and tenderness. Then wear gloves and palpate the edge, the floor and then through the floor the base of the ulcer. Then move the ulcer from side to side and test its fixity to the underlying structures. After completing the local examination of the ulcer, proceed to the focal examination. First, palpate the regional lymph nodes. Then examine the state of the arteries, veins and nerves depending on the type of the ulcer. And lastly, test the movements of the joints in the vicinity of the ulcer. Start with the palpation of the regional lymph node groups. This is a malignant breast ulcer. Here, the lymph nodes are hard, non-tender and discrete. If the ulcer is acutely infected, the lymph nodes will be enlarged and tender. If the lymph nodes are matted and non-tender, then suspect tuberculosis. If the regional lymph nodes are palpable, then palpate the higher group of lymph nodes also. Next, examine the related vessels and nerves. If the ulcer is situated in the lower half of the leg, ask the patient to stand and look for varicose veins. Examine the long and short saphenous veins and also look for scattered and irregular varicosities which are more commonly associated with varicose ulcer. If varicose ulcer is suspected, also test for deep vein thrombosis by testing calf tenderness, Homan sign and Moses sign. For every ulcer, anywhere on the leg, foot or over the hands, palpate all the related arteries on both sides to rule out vascular disease and arterial insufficiency. In particular, if the ulcer is located over the tips of the fingers or toes, or over the dorsum of the foot, then a detailed examination of the vascular system must be done. Then test the sensations of the skin surrounding the ulcer using a sharp pin. If the sensations are diminished, and particularly if the ulcer is of trophic type over a pressure bearing area, then the neurological examination must be conducted in full details. Map the areas of diminished sensations. Palpate posterior tibial, ulnar and greater auricular nerves for thickening as observed in leprosy. Look for hypopigmented anesthetic patches over the limbs, back and face and for features of leonine face. And if a spinal cord lesion is suspected, test accordingly. Lastly, examine the joints close to the ulcer and test the active and passive movements. Restriction of movements of the joints indicates muscle or tendon involvement or a painful inflammation. Having thus completed the focal examination, perform a quick systemic examination. In particular, Examine the cardiovascular system for evidence of congestive cardiac failure which delays ulcer healing. Examine the respiratory system for tuberculosis and secondaries. And examine the abdomen for evidence of splenomegaly in hemolytic anemias in leg ulcers. This concludes the clinical examination of ulcer.